My name is Phyllis Heaney. So this drum is 13 sided. We had 11 women string it all together. There was three of us that cleaned the, the skin and made the frame. And it's what we call our healing drum. And we use it whenever a bunch of us women get together. This is from my home farm. It's a cedar from my, my dad's farm. They set up a fence for the right size for this. 12 inch frame. The angle is a 12.8 angle. Takes me a while to set it up and I get mad when my husband uses it for something else and puts it on the 90. Okay, there we are, 12 inch frame. There, that's a, that's the pieces for a frame. Two, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. Okay, perfect. Thirteen. So there's the pieces for a twelve-inch drum. Okay, now these are ones that I glued yesterday, but we can glue one today. Let's do a ten-inch. So I prepare them in the baskets. A drum for one basket does has two drums in it. And on my table I've labeled where a 10 inch should go. You see? 10, 12, 13, 14. Oh, good way to do it. Now let's just see. This, just gonna sand this down so it's a little clearer. <laughs> That's better. Okay. Now my ten inch drum. Okay. See this wood was um was tongue and groove from from the house and so I was able to rip off the tongue and it gave me this bevel on each piece. Yep, okay, we're there. So, now, I use condensation cured glue. So it needs to be wetted first. <laughs> Very special, the stuff I reuse and reuse and reuse. Like these gloves. So they're just they're just big hose clamps. Big honking hose clamps. And they work great to put to when you use the glue you have to have pressure. So they work great to pull, apply the pressure. And they're pretty versatile for the different sizes of drums. So you'll notice I hold my knee against this hose clamp 
when I'm tightening it. This is, I learned this from experience, that if you hold it like this and it spins up and hits you, it hit me in the bridge of my nose and left me a cut. War wound, so I don't do that anymore. Okay, so those post clamps are ready. This great thing about this glue is that it's waterproof. So the benefit of that is if you have a drum and it starts, after it's stretched, it starts sounding soft and it needs to be restretched, you can soak the whole thing and it won't fall apart. I've had people give me drums to fix and I put them in water and then they went all into all the pieces, right? But this glued is waterproof, completely waterproof. So you were asking about how long it takes to make a drum. When I add up all the time it takes me, including preparing the hide, making the frame, sanding the frame, and, and skinning the drum and dyeing it, it's about 10 to 15 hours for each drum. <laughs> From start to finish, if you were to start and finish the drum, it would take about a month if you include all the time it takes for drying and stretching and drying again. But I kept pretty good records when I was starting to make the drum to figure out how much to charge for a drum. I'm not making as much as I did when I was working at the plant, but I'm having a lot of fun. This is the last started piece. Drums. Oh, I just started drumming and then I thought, hey, I'd like one of those drums and they're too expensive. I think I can make one. That was um, a set of African drums, the Dune Dunes. And so I went to some guy's house in Gatineau. I spent the day with him and he taught me how to string a sang bun. Those are all good. Okay. Now we're to the point of tightening it. Okay. And I guess just it has to be rawhide because um, a drum is, that is not made out of rawhide sounds dead. It's got no, it doesn't have that beautiful bell-like sound that you get from a nice rawhide sound, drum. I love it when people come into the store and they're looking at the drums and I say, play one. And as soon as they do, their eyes just light up. They never imagine them to sound like that. So now I just need to get it all evened up. Okay. Make sure it's square. Ten and a quarter inches. Ten and a quarter inches. Beautiful. So that needs 24 hours, and then that's ready to be sanded. This is my
my downdraft table. So I, I sand over top of here to try to keep some of the dust out of the building. Doesn't always work. My husband isn't always happy with me. Okay, I'm going to turn on the vacuum. It's going to make a lot of noise. a normal salad bowl but then when I take the bottom out or cut a hole in it I make it into a drum frame so I'm repurposing these ones are bowls that were just in the value village so I repurpose them into drums they work out pretty well the thing is that the frame is much quicker for me to make than a 13 sided frame so I can charge a little less for these drums so it makes them ideal for a kid or something because they're not as much money. They still have a decent sound. So this was a quite a deep bowl. I cut it in half. The top half I've already made into drum and now this bottom half I'll sand down and this will be a wonderful drum. This is a smaller one. Same deal. This one was a long piece and I've cut it into two drums. I'm going to put two sides of leather on it to make it like a a little little two-sided drum. This one I will leave intact. I'll sand the edge down here and I'll put um, beads in it and then I'll put the skin on it and it'll be like a rattle. It'll have a, a nice sound to it. This one I'll do the same thing. It'll be perfect with having some beads in here that can swish around and sound like the ocean. Mm, that's those. My husband made me this bench, and it's, he made it just the perfect height for me. I'm only five foot one, so lots of things are not the right height for me. And the boards on it are from my home farm. My dad and I planed them down. They're willow and maple. Oh, and here's something interesting. You can see where the maple tree was tapped. Here's a tap hole. This is my stamp. It's, you can see it's in the reverse image and um, I have Variac with it, so I can heat it up to a different temperature depending on what kind of wood I'm using. And then I just use it on a block of wood. When it's hot, I count to about 30 seconds, and I have my stamp. What's your name? My name is Phyllis Heaney. My husband had this stamp made for me. He gave it to me for a birthday gift a few years ago. So right now, I am in the middle of punching a skin. This is a deer skin. I'm punching it with 19 holes, and this is where the lacing will go. Why 19? Well, 19, it has to be an uneven number, and I like to do a lot of holes so that it stretches evenly, but lots of people use less holes than that, but I think it does a nicer job. This drum that I'm stretching right now is going to be a 12 inch, a 12 inch frame. The frame is 13 sided. You can see now the 13 sides symbolizes the lunar calendar because there's 13 moons in a year. So I think for this one, we will do a star pattern. So I'm going to fold it for a star pattern, just like you would fold a t-shirt for tie-dyeing a t-shirt, except it's a little more tricky. There. 
t-shirt, the dye will go right through the fabric, so it's not as tricky. Whereas this, with the leather, or with the rawhide, the dye won't soak through, so you have to be a little more careful. Now we're ready to start dyeing. Get my gloves on. Yeah, don't ask. <laughs> so, I dye using Q-tips. Hopefully soon they'll start making Q-tips without plastic stems. This one, I think, will do a standard rainbow. So we'll start with all the colors of the rainbow. Red, orange, yellow, green, turquoise, indigo, violet. Or as my science teacher taught me, Roy G. Biv. Roy G. Biv. Red, orange, yellow, green, biv, blue, indigo, violet. There we go. So we'll start with a nice red in the center. So the advantage of dyeing and not painting, you'll see some drums that are painted, but if you wear if you use your drum a lot, the paint will wear off. Whereas oh, okay. this is dyed right into the rawhide so it won't. So so if you include the amount of time that it takes to prepare the skin from, I start with the raw hide from a hunter and I have to flesh it and then I have to um, dehair it. I take the meat that I take off the hide and I feed it to my chickens. I take the fat and I make it into soap so that I try to use as much of the animal as I can. Now normally the hunters would take their skin and either leave it in the bush or throw it in the garbage, so most of them are more than happy to see that it's getting used for something. So I dye it and then I have to leave it for 24 hours, like that one I dyed yesterday, and then I stretched it today. I leave it for 24 hours, and then I'm able to stretch it. And then it takes about two days to dry. Depends on the weather. Now I'm wrapping it so that the dye won't all... Um, if the dye all spreads out, it'll just end up the whole thing brown. So I'm wrapping it up keeps the dye where it's supposed to be, so I still keep that rainbow. <laughs> anyway, this one's ready to be to be stretched. Um, we haven't done any stretching yet, have we? No, we can do that. So good side down. Good side down, and oh, here we go. This is important. My symbol on the inside. Felicini. Handcrafted by Felicini. My husband had that made for me, too. Fifteen feet, that's not long enough. Thirty-five feet, that's good. This is the lacing that I cut. I cut this lacing yesterday. This is how it works. Go around the corner, kind of. Just be real careful around the corner. Straight away is the easiest part. Because that's how you can get, take a small deer and get a 70 feet worth of lacing if you need it. We needed 90 feet of lacing for that big drum upstairs. Now you can smell it. <laughs> you can, this is not for the faint of heart. This is 35 feet of lacing, which should do a 13 inch drum. So 35 feet, I go halfway, five, 10, 15, that's about halfway. Okay, so I'm just getting ready. Oh, I better get these out of the way. That would cause trouble. So I'm just getting ready to lace this. 
So this drum has 19 holes. So I start at the first hole. And I lace in a star pattern. Why? Um, just like making a star, you want to be evenly, just, just like tightening the bolts on your tires, you want to do it evenly. That's basically what it is. So I start at 1, and I go to 11. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Oh, this one's only 15. Well, that's funny. Okay, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. I did this one 15. Okay, so I don't do... I do 15, 16, 9, 9, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 9. Start loose and you just keep on tightening and tightening and tightening and tightening. I won't make you have to stick around for all that. We'll just get it strung and then we can go on and do something else. Fixed up my mistakes. When you stretch it out, it gets pretty thin and when it, when it dries, it does too. I have a tool for making the lacing, too, that my husband made for me. I can show you that later if you want. Because I used to cut all the lacing by hand with the scissors, and my, my forearms were getting too big. <laughs> there we go. That should do it. Centered. Okay, perfect. Now then, this one goes over here. Almost done the last holes. The skin is a funny thing. You really can't predict it, how much it'll stretch compared to the last skin. And a moose is really different from a deer. But a buck is so different from a doe, from a calf. My fawn. Okay. Now that I'm all the way around, then I can start to tighten. I put on a pair of gloves. It gives me good grip. These from the dollar store are the best. <laughs> I've tried other ones, and they're not near as good. Just round and round. That's it. I, uh, I do it about probably six times over until I get less than an inch of stretch in the lacing. Then I know I'm close. <laughs>